Hey, Kid Detectives, welcome back. Hope you had a great weekend. We're ready to start our Monday off with Chapter 10 for Missing Manatee. Just a reminder before we get started, please have your uh, detective notebook or a piece of paper out. That way you can jot down some ideas, uh, maybe some questions that you might have, okay? Some things that need to be solved. Uh, we're going to be doing this for the rest of the year. It's nice and handy to maybe even uh, mark it off as your missing manatee section. Okay, so grab that notebook so you're ready to write down some clues. And before we get started, just want to remind you about the elements of mystery. Today we'll be mostly focusing on our suspect, Dirty Dan. And we have a clue, but it's not a physical clue. I'll describe it a little bit more in the next few slides, but basically we're looking for a reaction from other characters about Dirty Dan. Hey guys, so before we start chapter 10, I just want to go over our learning target. Um, it's really simple. We've been going over this for a long time. We also did it at the beginning of the year, but I just want to review. What you should be focusing on today is our Dirty Dan character again. But let's focus on Dirty Dan and how his son reacts to him. So Blink is going to come into um, the scene and Blink acts a certain way. And I really want you to focus on why does Blink feel this way towards Dirty Dan? And that is really all you're focusing on. Chapter 10 is super short. It's only five and a half pages. So only thing I want you to focus on is how Blink reacts to Dirty Dan. Okay. All right. So enjoy the reading. Hey guys, so before we get started, I'm going to do a little recap for chapter nine, just so you have it fresh in your mind. So what happened with the last chapter, uh, Dirty Dan took Skeet to a secret fishing spot. So they had been fishing for a while with no luck, and Skeet was not feeling really good about his fishing skills. Um, Skeet seemed to get better, okay, and he was starting to be able to, to uh, spot Tarpon, and uh, as he was casting his fishing line, he was feeling a little bit more confident. Um, Skeet, I guess he goes down to get a snack, or he's looking for a drink, and Skeet notices that uh, Dirty Dan has a gun, and he also has blue nylon rope, okay, and he kind of trips over it, uh, and he stows it away for him. Then Ski uh, caught his first tarpon, okay, so that's a big part of this. He finally caught his tarpon. Uh, they release it back, or, and it did take a long time. Like, he had to keep on pulling and pulling and, and wearing down the tarpon. So finally, um, he, he caught it. He, uh, they released it back into the water. Um, but unfortunately, he didn't have a photo uh, or, like, a camera to take a, a picture or anything. But luckily... The whole experience of catching that fish was good enough for him. Um, when we start this next chapter, they're still on the boat, but they're about ready to go in. Okay, so that's where we're headed off from there. Right, so before we get started with chapter 10, we're going to go over some vocabulary time. But like I said before, chapter 10 is only five and a half pages long. So we only have two vocabulary words to go over. The first vocabulary word is hindrance. Hindrance is a thing that provides resistance, uh, delay, or obstruction to something or someone, okay? And I don't have any pictures for you today for both the vocabulary words, but we're going to talk about where it is in the book. So hindrance is on page 98, and what it talks about is, I'll start here in 97, it says, I shouldn't have been surprised to Dirty Dan's way of thinking. A radio wasn't a good thing to have in case of emergency. It was a possible hindrance to landing a fish. That's why he was the tarpon man. Okay, so what's that saying is that Dirty Dan is so obsessed with his fishing that he only cares about his fishing that he doesn't even care about having a radio on a boat. He's just like, eh, that's going to stop me from getting my fish. So the hindrance, it stops him. Um, the other word that we're going to go over is attentive, which is on page 101. So um, Skeet has gotten back. He's at Larry's Marina, and he's kind of uh, boasting, which vocabulary word from Charlotte's Web, or bragging about his catch. And uh, let me read the little bottom part right here. Um, he says, they were as attentive an audience as I could have hoped for. And they had a lot of questions, too. 
okay? And attentive means they were paying close attention to something. So they found his story to be super interesting, and that's what attentive means. You're very, you're paying attention, it's, you know, you can't keep your eyes off of it. All right, so enjoy this reading today. It is super short, and I'll talk to you when we're all done. Chapter 10. We sat for a while talking about the fish and the fight, reliving every moment for the sheer pleasure of it. At around 3.30, Dan said we'd better head in. I was putting away my rod when I had a sudden idea. Hey, Dan, could we get on the radio to Mac and tell him about my fish? Dan took a sip from his bottle. No radio, he said. I lost a big tarpon one day when my fly line got tangled on the antenna. I was so mad I ripped the darn thing off. He grinned, much better that way. I shouldn't have been surprised, to Dirty Dan's way of thinking. A radio wasn't a good thing to have in case of an emergency. It was a possible hindrance to landing a fish. That's why he was the tarpon man. No sweat, I said, thinking I was glad Mom was at work so there was no chance of meeting her at the dock when we got back. If she knew I'd been out all day with no radio, no food, no fresh water, not to mention with a bottle of whiskey and a gun in the boat, well, I didn't even want to think about how mad she'd be at me and Mac both. No way I wanted to be the cause of another fight. Plus, I'd never be allowed to go fishing with Dirty Dan again. That was for sure. Thinking of Mom reminded me that I was supposed to wear a life jacket when we were running. Guiltily, I realized I hadn't worn one on the way out. I'd have put one on for the ride home, but no surprise this time, there weren't any. I peeked at the bottle of whiskey and saw it was pretty near empty. Uh-oh. Was Dan drunk? He didn't seem to be. I washed him, stow his push pole, and let the engine down. He moved around the boat quickly and easily, not stumbling or staggering like drunks in the movies. The whiskey didn't seem to have an effect on him, so why not just drink water, I wondered. Dan asked, ready to roll, Skeet? His voice sounded normal, too, not slurry and mumbly like a drunk's. I gave a mental shrug and said, ready. We took off, zooming across the flats, and all my worried thoughts blew away with the breeze. I could hardly believe it. I'd caught a tarpon. At Larry's, I helped Dan secure the boat. I was thanking him for the thousand thousandth time when Blink walked up. Blinky was by his side, a ball in his mouth. Hi, Dirty Dan. Hi, Skeet, Blink said. Instead of his usual smile, though, Blink wore a worried expression. His eyes blinked even faster than normal, and his gaze flew anxiously from Dirty Dan to me and back to Dan again. He sounded nervous. I noticed he hadn't reached into his pocket for the flipping quarter. Hey, Blink, I said. What's up? Dan smiled and gave his son's shoulder a pat. How's it going, Blink? Blink seemed to relax a little at that, but he asked, Is Dirty Dan mad? Mad, said Dan. He looked at as puzzled as I felt by Blink's question. Was Skeet bad? Did Dirty Dan have to get mad? Blink went on. An odd expression passed over Dan's face. Then he smiled quickly and said, Heck no, Skeet here got himself a tarpon. What do you think of that? Skeet got a tarpon? Blink repeated. That's good, Skeet. I was glad to see his face split into a huge grin. Skeet got a tarpon. I sure did, I said. He was a beauty. And believe me, nobody's mad, except maybe the fish. Blink got a big kick out of that. He kept laughing and saying over and over, Skeet caught a beauty, and nobody's mad but the fish. Then I saw him reach into his pocket before he could say it. I did. Want to flip? Blink found that hilarious, too. He said, no, Skeet. I say want to flip. Remember, I say it. Then we play. Oh, right, I said. I forgot. Okay, you say it. Want to flip? Sure. We played one game, and I was happy to see he'd forgotten about Dan and me being bad or mad or whatever he'd been so worried about. I said, Blink, I'll play again, but I've got to get something to drink first. And I think I'll go take a shower and sit in the air conditioning for a while, said Dan. Okay, Dan. Hey, thanks, I said as he turned to go. That was so great. It was the best day of my life. Really, I mean it. Dan smiled. You did good, Skeet. Tell Mac I said so. You coming, Blink? Skeet and I are going to play again, Dirty Dan, Blink answered. 
all right you come on home after have some supper blink and i went into the marina followed by blinky i didn't have any money with me but larry said to take whatever i wanted on credit blink announced to the whole store that skeet caught a tarpon and it was a beauty and nobody was mad but the fish so after i slugged down a can of soda then another i told the story to larry and blink and blinky and two guys who were hanging around they were as attentive an audience as i could have hoped for and they had a lot of questions too so i opened a third can of soda and a bag of chips and sat down on the old wooden stool by the counter i finally had a good fish story of my own and i figured on taking my sweet time telling it hey everyone i hope you enjoyed chapter 10 that really really quick chapter and here are two questions for you to answer before you're finished uh, let me go over them really quick. So the first question says, why does Blink think that Dirty Dan is mad? Okay, now there isn't a, a real like concrete answer here. I kind of want to hear your opinion as a kid detective. Okay, so think about why are some reasons or what could be a suspicious reason why Blink might think that Dirty Dan is mad? Okay, I'll just write one sentence about that. The next question says, do you think uh, Dirty Dan is a good suspect. Okay, so think about the things that he, uh, that uh, Skeet has picked up on and some of the clues or lack thereof clues. And do we think that Dirty Dan is our best suspect? Okay, and then just give a sentence why. Uh, enjoy the rest of your day, guys, and we'll see you tomorrow. Bye.